Good day, listeners. You're listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is Chris Miller, your host. Um, I'm excited for today's interview. It's starting to look a little bit like summer in Dallas, and I am moving ahead with my art exhibit scheduled for September. And uh, some of you may have heard that I'm working with art that shares kind of an emotional content. And um, so today I'm going to step out in curiosity. I, I met someone that's very interesting. And sh- today's guest, she's going to be sharing what I would consider almost a much more curated process to creating art with transformative energy in mind. So as you know, I am just listening to music and painting, and I'm letting it happen. So Anne De Rule, Dallas-based Anne De Rule, creates contemporary abstract paintings that are spiritually symbolic and emanate transformational energies. You know what? I'm not sure what transformational is, so we're going to ask Anne. But her often multidimensional works are inspired by her studies in sacred geometry. So you can see she's mathematical, and so these are these processes of math are coming into play. It's much more curated. Um, Anne founded Life Changes Unlimited in 1997, and she integrates 25 years of scientific and spiritual training in personal empowerment consultations using her exclusive quantum solutions process. So I'm excited not only to talk about her energy work, but also to talk about quantum solutions. So good morning or good afternoon, Anne. How are you today? Hey, Chris, I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I, I, as you can see, there's a lot. As I looked over your bio and all your all of your training, there's so much. You have so much training. Um, well, I've, I've been around long enough to have accomplished some of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm. I, I want to start out with with the, what does transformational mean when you when you um when you create something and I, and you are an artist, I want to remind the listeners of that you are an artist. Some of your work is behind you and we're going to overlay some of it as well, but how, what, how, what does transformational mean? Well, what it means is that my art for the most part is all emanating different positive high frequency energies and people who are energy feelers can stand in front of them. Say like the ones behind me on the wall, they can stand in front of those and say, well, I feel so-and-so and and -and so-and-so and -and so-and-so. And And I thought, oh my gosh, you're perfectly right on. You know, one of them is peace and joy and another one is abundance. I don't feel energies like that, but I can bring them through my art and I can do it with hands-on healing work if need be. But, you know, I'm more audio and visual and not uh, kinesthetic per se. So I, in terms of people feeling the energies in that way, that's one aspect of it. But then in the quantum solutions, energy work I do for individuals or groups where it helps to empower them to enjoy more of the life they want. Uh, Those sessions are about identifying at the subconscious level, which runs about 90% of our life, plus or minus. Typically at that level, we're resonating with what we don't want. And we're not resonating with what we do want. So back to law of attraction, all of that is just 180 out of sync. So when we identify those things and we can check it with the individual or individuals through kinesiology, muscle testing, muscle checking, and we can apply the art like they can breathe in the energy coming off of a specific piece that have been guided to, breathe in that energy, fill their body with it three times, come back and muscle check them. And they've done a 180 shift with that. They're resonating entirely differently. Then what they do want can just more automatically show up in their life. They can create it. The blocks have been dissolved at that subconscious level. It's, it's totally life-changing and enhancing. So do, you, do, do they make art or are they responding? No. Go ahead. no, I'm using the art that I have created. Oh, and you actually take that into the classroom? Well, yes. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like I've been doing some classes lately and I'll just take, I'm taking my painting uh, that's called Ascension and it's 36 by 36 acrylic on canvas. And I'll take that in there and whatever we need to do, the person will breathe that in and uh, we'll switch the energies. I've been doing it in a group setting 
whereby one person from the group will come up front and proxy for the entire group. And that's the person I'm muscle checking. And then we'll come back at the end and she'll breathe in that energy or he, and they can feel it with their arm, you know, in the kinesiology muscle checking that they've done a complete 180 shift. And sometimes people who are not so familiar with that, their teeth just drop, you know, their mouth, you know, it's like they're so surprised because their body's just getting it all. But you don't, you just said earlier, you don't feel it yourself or, or you don't feel it. Not consciously like some people do. Oh, how interesting. Now I can do some things that will release energy in my body and I can feel my shoulders up here, a release there and kind of relax but I didn't know it was so tense to begin with. Mm-hmm. So when, when you create your art, do you, do you obviously, cause it's you're very, when we talked about this beforehand, uh, listeners, we shared a lunch together. You, you use a lot of strategy and symbolism in the work itself, right? Right. Right. And so what's behind me is an earlier phase of work that I was doing. And I don't know how well that shows up. It's kind of like a three-tiered symbology. And each one emanates a different God kind of quality frequency. But if if it shows up well enough, we need a Zoom camera right now. (laughs) (laughs) I'll get you some. I'll get some of the images and and slide them over on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. But what's interesting is, you know, I have a friend that does ensemblage art. And we talked about that, where she does all sorts of... um, uh, reclaimed, repurposed, th- found right. objects, and you're right. very yours is very different because oh yeah, while it's three dimensional, mm-hmm. it's actually very thought out and planned. Is that yes. correct? Yes, yes. And I can have the plan in place when I start in on the piece, and sometimes it will evolve as I'm working on it. Then and make some changes or add some things or whatever. But like the symbology of these pieces, whether it's a small circle or a big half circle at the top. That represents creator, God, source. And the middle portion, that's the larger part of the elements on the pieces, represents a macro world of infinite potential, all the energy that's out in the world for creation to be manifested from. And then the lower level, which is three small items, that represents that level of creation, the manifested world. And so when when we were at lunch, and we might want to share this with our listeners. How did you learn this symbology? How do you learn what 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 a circle means or what? This was given to me divinely. I'm being guided with some of that. So when you create, is it something you hear? I, I, I had a conversation once uh, about two years ago at the Wellness Expo with the guy that was psychic about, uh-huh. and he shared with me how people receive information. Some see images. Mm-hmm. Some hear words and some just feel it. Like they feel a movement. Right. How right. do you, how are you guided? I, uh, I usually don't see an entire image. I might get a feeling of something, but generally I do a lot of questioning and getting my own inner answers. And some of that I will hear because I'm more audio in that sense. Or clear audience is what I've oh, been told. So, so, so a, a questioning, do I do a circle, triangle, square? rectangle or whatever you know and I will get my answer as to what I need and where and how big to go with it well, I think it's, yeah I think I think it's fascinating because like I said I'm I'm creating this work and I'm just listening to music and feeling an impulse mm-hmm. and the impulse is just on such a subconscious level right but with, with you are when you create a piece of work do you sit down and, and set an intention first of what you want the work to to accomplish or do uh <laughs> not per se it's really? like okay what's my next piece and i'm following the guidance as to what comes through so i've got a whole series of those and then i got into creating art with layered plexiglass mm-hmm. again multi these pieces behind me are multi-dimensional on paper they're spaced apart but then the plexiglass some of them have one two or three layers of plexiglass all elevated behind the background and um where to go with that again it's 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 i ask for it like chris i don't know if you remember the the piece on the front of my business card Uh with the triangles coming down Mm -hmm. i had met a fella a few years back 
in fact, he was at my place and saw some of my art and he experienced my transformational healing work, if that's what you want to call it. And he said, well, we should collaborate. And I'm like saying to myself, why do we need to collaborate? I know how to do what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> Miss Smarty Pants. But uh, anyway, I went out to his apartment some months later because I kept running into him. And he was out in Arlington, went to his apartment. He had all this plexiglass work. I just about went nuts. I've always loved plexiglass. I could see these things behind me that, I'm, that are layered, could see them in plexiglass, but I had no idea how to work with it or how to use it. And he was like, well, I'll help you. So we decided then before I left out there that we would collaborate. And on my way home on Friday night, rush hour traffic on I-30. Uh, okay. And I was figuring, you know, we would throw several ideas in a pot and vote on one. Okay. Well, do I get a title first or a picture? And I did while I was driving. Of course, slow traffic on Friday afternoon. But I did get a feel and kind of a picture of that. I went home and drew it out and sent it to him. And then he put it on the computer and separated it out into three layers and and we were off and running and that piece is called the birthing of divinity so okay so what i hear if this is correct is you don't set the intention you just ask you just right. ask what what is for me to do like sort of right. what is for me to make next well right. that's good yeah yeah uh -huh. and and you got in this case you got a vision of what of what yeah. you thought it should be yeah and I don't know that I get a vision all that often, but uh, that that came through. Uh huh. Wow, it's so interesting. It's so different from how I work. Because so, so I uh, I I sit in front of an easel. It's different, but the same. Because I let uh -huh. I let the canvas unfurl and tell me what it wants to be. But uh -huh. I, I it's more like I throw a bunch of stuff. I throw some color down, and then uh -huh. and I just start playing with it. And uh -huh. and I hear you know get rid of add get add subtract move uh -huh. right. And, uh -huh. and it's so, and amazingly, it becomes something. But right. I don't, I don't see the something at the, uh, I don't know what it's going to become. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, well, some pieces I do get that play in it. Like the piece I just mentioned a while ago called Ascension on the 36 by 36 canvas. My background on that, that was a matter of a bunch of layers of paint and splattering and making spritzing it with alcohol to make holes in the um, acrylic so that you would see what's underneath it too and some multiple layers of that and that's that was my background but that's play I have to get out of my driveway with that and do that outside you know but I knew very well where I was going to put this geometric grid and the colors and everything for that but what's interesting even then the colors I use for the background I would never have thought of combining these colors like it came to me, but I was guided and followed the guidance. And it's wonderful. It's blues and greens and the way it goes together, but it was using a blue purple that I never would have gotten into. Just a fun process to see what's going to evolve. So it's like, I'm just as surprised as somebody else sometimes. Yeah. You know, that's funny. That's now that's where I am similar with you. I, I don't know. Suddenly colors come out or co color harmony. And when I try to, when I try to force it, like when I try to pre-plan it and say, it's going to be red, it, it, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of my earlier pieces that I did in that series was before I had done so much art and when I did these small pieces, anyway, some of the background was showing through, a turquoise was showing through a darker color that I put on top of it. Man, I scrambled and worked myself to death to cover all those blue spots up that were showing through. Now I wish I'd left it. It was, it was a great flow, but I know that now I didn't know that then because I was trying to force what I thought I was supposed to be doing per my initial sketch drawing of it, you know? That's that's an interesting thing for us to discuss. Is there is time where the red will jump out, and it, and I'll hear something and say, "Make it red," mm -hmm. right? But then there's the me. I call it the little me, the little Chris right. that says, right. "Make it red." There's a difference. One is when I'm listening, and uh -huh. the other is when I'm telling. <laughs> exactly. Back to ego, easing God out. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. Thinking, you know what's the best thing. And and when when I get to ego, that's where all the, that's where the trouble begins. <laughs> right, right. And fortunately, I've gotten past some of that with the art now. I've been into it long enough. 
So in a, in a lot of ways, it is very similar to what I do. You, 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 Somewhat. you're totally open. You're not, you know, I, I'm often amazed when I meet artists and there are a lot of artists like that, that actually know exactly what they're going to do before they start. You know, I'm going to paint that, that basket of strawberries and they, and that's it. Right. The reason I love abstract is because I don't know. And exactly. And, you can't. No. Uh-huh. And that's probably why you like what you do, right? Well, and, but even with my sketch beforehand, I will, with guidance, work out all the colors and where I'm going to put textures and not put textures and how I might create those textures, you know, but then sometimes some of that has to evolve while I'm working on it in the process. Well, I like that because I used to think that you, you, you know, you had to just let it flow on, on the canvas or on the workroom, in the workroom. And now I'm realizing as I work on this, like I'm working on this show, I got a vision of something that I needed to do to make the, the song work. And so I did kind of sketch it out. I actually did diagram it out. And that's so not me. Hey, right? congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It works terrific. But yeah, yeah. But, kind of so, fun, huh? <laughs> well, how did you get? Okay, so I love the process of what you're doing. And, and I, love the, I love the work. It's very, very tight and clean uh, i'll share that with the listeners it's very very carefully done consciously done so how where did you jump though to that that it has healing uh, modalities to it how did you learn that or how did you realize that it kind of evolved out of my doing the energy healing work and i had taken a, a level of training uh that dealt with um dealt with sacred geometry and when I'd be in a session with an individual and it was time to do a 180 reversal with all of the energies that were out of sync I'd pull up maybe I'd be guided to pull up out of the booklet that came with that course maybe a flower of life design and they would need to trace over it in a certain particular color of pencil and that's where I kind of got on to the notion that hey there's some power in this geometry stuff, you know? And after that, um, I guess I went to some kind of conference and, and got more into the energy and the sacred geometry of it all. But uh, I remember telling a friend of mine, golly, I'd love to be doing some art that's bringing through those energies of sacred geometry and would be healing in that regard. And I was kind of like, oh, well, you know, fat chance of that. And I said, well, at least uplifting and inspiring or something, you know, telling this to another friend of mine. And she said, oh, get out your pencil and paper and just do it. They'll give it to you. So I did. And it did. So, And that was the beginning. And that was probably oh. the beginning of this series behind me some so years you, ago. So you did just rather stumble upon it. It's like when several different paths in our life come together. Right. But I certainly didn't know it was possible. <laughs> Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, now, when you sit now, when you sit and see a piece of your work, maybe a year later, do you feel what it what it's healing or or its message or? No, not really. Huh. Um, just some of them, you know, I'm so visual. Some of them, of course, I'm drawn to and like and want to look at them more than ever. But I get into doing some different transformational things on myself that come up almost daily, a number of times during the week. And it will be for me to go to breathe in the energies from one of my paintings. And right now, the energy of ascension and the energy of my painting called resurrection are coming up all the time for me. Let's talk about, you got to tell me more about what you just brought in there. So what do you mean by that? What do you mean by your transformational work daily? Explain that. Well, you know, we all get aches and pains or funny little symptoms. Years ago, after I was into some of this healing work, I was trading some sessions with a, another friend of mine. And one day she says, oh, uh, she was working on me and says, look like we're into some parallel lives. You ready for this? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> and I thought, well, what are you talking about? And she says, well... You know, the, the, we're all we all exist in eleven or twelve different realities at the same time, 
and because and I've since seen that on PBS and Nova shows and whatnot out of quantum physics the scientists yeah. are saying that now but because we're so energetically connected with these other realities of ours something can be going on negative in one or more of those negative to us here and it can be jerking on you here and vice versa well uh, so that's i have funny little aches and pains or different funny symptoms that will come up on a on a periodic basis so right after that after she tuned me into that it was i came home and i added parallel lives to my index healing index and the next week i'm tooling through my living room two o'clock in the afternoon all of a sudden I have a sore throat well, what's that about, you know? So I go to my index, check it, kinesiology, parallel lives, switch it off and the sore throat's gone. So that's that's still going on for me. That's what I'm doing a lot of the time with different kinds of symptoms, turning off negative aspects of parallel lives and turning on positive aspects of parallel lives. And zap, it's gone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, that is just, it's so, I've heard a lot of the same concepts. I definitely have heard that there's parallel lives. I've heard all that theory. And then with, with my mentality, I just like, oh, that's, that's, I can't, I can't even get, get there. Right. I can't, I, 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 it's one of those things I just put in that category of, I don't know. Right. right? I well, know. I, I hope I explained it to you enough that your eyes didn't have to glaze over. And no, no, you, you didn't. Take you it didn't. in. I got, and I got what you were saying. So I, I just, I, I wonder, and I wonder if in a way I do note synchronicity in life and I'm constantly amazed how, if you, if you learn to listen, that's a big thing for me, listening and, and being aware, right. suddenly you'll find that the universe or whatever you want to call that, the greater power is constantly sending you what you need, yeah. you know? Absolutely. I mean, in the weirdest situation, last night we went to see a, sh a ballet show and I ran into someone that does a lot of public relations that will actually help me out a lot. Totally random. I knew her two years ago uh, before COVID, ran into her. She's saying, oh, I can help you do this. And it was like instantly I'm like, wow. Yeah. How do you know that synchronicity yeah. of life, right? Yeah. Do you love it? Yeah. And you, and you, so know, you know, and I jokingly liked it when those happen on set. Oh, thank you. There is a God after all, you know? <laughs> yes, constantly. And every time, yes. and if ever I doubt that, I get hit upside the head with a little sign. Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah. you get reminded. <laughs> I get reminded. I'm talking to you. I, I feel like this. I'm talking. And I wonder, you know, I, I don't know if it's talking to me from another dimension, you know, another dimension of me or yeah. my higher self. Right. You know, and it or, doesn't or, matter. It doesn't matter. Right. It's, it's for your higher good. Right. Yeah. I, I, I do think we get so caught up in names and, 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 right. and boundaries. And if we just sit there and go, it's part of the mystery of life. Right. There you go. I like that. Yeah. So I think that's amazing that the, the way you work through that process and have refined it, and it's sort of like you stumbled upon it, you know, talking about the art. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it just continues to go on, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm eager to do some more of the, the 36 by 36 inch canvases that I'm doing. Uh -huh. I call my grid series. I stumbled across, <laughs> you know, everything is potential art to me. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. Everything is potential art. I love it. And my friend who's close by and he's an artist. We go raid bulky trash sitting out on the street every month. And one, one day there was like, from container store probably, pristine clean white tubular cube box. Each side was like 12 inches square and it was separated into two inch squares within the 12 inches. And it was modular, you could take it all apart and whatnot. Well, I saw that, hey, it's geometric, you know, with these squares, with all the little squares in it. So boy, I grabbed that. It's been in my garage maybe a couple of years. And finally, okay, it's time to address this. So I've started this whole grid series and that's what I'm doing on the canvases. And um, coming up with some wonderful designs and colors that I'm being guided to. And the, and the Ascension is one of the latest ones I've done in that series. So I'm just using one of those 12 inch squares somewhere in the piece. 
And what what's really funny, some of the I didn't understand that there was more to it than that. And I I read a piece that came online a couple of years ago as I was finishing up one piece. I didn't know what it was about. And she explained that um we were at a point where there's an aquamarine ray coming into the planet and it's coming through us to help raise our frequency and our consciousness and that it can't completely go through us until we've got our lower chakras cleared. Well, I had this painting, I off-centered the grid with these squares and I had some red, orange and red, orange elements within those. Well, those I come to find out represent the lower chakra colors. And all of my line work in that piece is gold in that grid and the lines extend out horizontally and vertically across the entire canvas. But, and I've got this aquamarine thing coming down. It doesn't go through the grid, but it stops at the grid and it comes out from the bottom again. And I put some textures in that. I thought, well, that'd just be fun to do, you know. I didn't even know about the aquamarine ray at that point. And to the left of that, the background color is primarily blue, but with a lot of textures and interest in it. Well, and of course, blue represent can represent God's will. And on the right side, it's greens and purples. Well, back to heart and wisdom combined, you know. And then the gold lines rep can represent the Christed energy, golden energy going in all directions. So the name of the painting that I heard was Love Without End. And, so, you know, I find out afterwards. So, and here's the ultimate to that. By the same person who published that a couple of years ago, about six weeks ago or so, she published something and said something. This explained the whole grid series to me. We are migrating from a 3D world of external sustenance to a 5D world of eternal sustenance. Well, my titles for all these new grid paintings I'm doing, love without end, evolution, inspiration, consciousness manifesting. Those are all more 5D kinds of things. So thank you for coming through to me, writing from someone else. <laughs> is that not a hoot? It is, it's amazing. You know, and I think it's really even more amazing. You, you don't really have to know it. It's just coming to you, you know? Either me or it shows up somewhere, just like that in the writings. And I, love, I love how you talked about when, when a title jumps out at you. Do you ever have, do you ever finish something and a title doesn't come? Uh, not yet, because I usually manage to get one. Do you? When I ask. Sometimes it might take a little while. Like that love without end, I'd kind of been asking through the process. Nothing, but when it was time, I was just almost through with it. And okay, what's the title? And there it was, Love Without End. Because, you know, sometimes I don't have a title come to me. I'll, I'll finish a painting and I'm just like, it's just what, and I'll be untitled abstract, you know, and it just, yeah, right. I don't feel it. I don't feel the title. It's not that right. I don't love the painting because I, I don't paint what I don't love, right? Right, right. But it just doesn't jump. Um, I usually hear it, you know. Well, you know, you were saying that you're, you're uh, verbal and perhaps visual, but I would think that the fact that you're working in 3D, that you're also kinesthetic. You know, if, if I would think that you have, you must have a very strong kinesthetic sense. Well, maybe, but just not in terms of feeling energies. You know, there's some people that could meet somebody or walk into a room or hold a rock or crystal and say, and really get a feel of the energy per se, what they get off that. I don't get that. I don't get it at that level which I, I sometimes wish I do, you know. That's what you mean. You know, because I can sure be a, I can be a sheep walking into a lion's den, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, you yes. know, it, it, it's funny because I, I li right before this interview, I, I did a little searching online. I listened to a guy that was doing a Reiki, a Reiki healing meditation. And, and, um, and I wondered, so with your, with your quantum solutions process, do you do work like that? Phys like, do you do Reiki type work or is, or, Tell us a Generally bit. not. I can, uh, but I go through a process uh, of a notebook and a lot of different steps to identify what's needed. Yeah, I can do the hands-on healing if somebody's on a table or whatnot, but my process is more complex and deeper than that in a way. 
Oh, okay. And if somebody's hurt, like Chris, if you came over and, oh, my shoulder's hurting, I might would do some quickie energy things for your shoulder. But typically in a, pro, in a regular session, that's not what I'm doing. The kinesiology is leading me through my index of items I have accumulated. I've taken like 16 or 17 different types of body, mind, spirit, healing modalities around the country. And I put them all together in an index. And then it, in recent years, it has pretty well boiled down to my own process now. A bunch of that stuff, I, at this point, I don't even remember. What was I doing then, you know? But it's, so it's my own exclusive process at this point that we go through to turn it. Most of a session will be what you're resonating with that's not the way you want to be resonating. And then at the end, we'll switch it. So you can be resonating with what you do want. And then that just dissolves blocks. You're more empowered to go after it, to create it, to attract it. Life can just automatically, seemingly change. So what I'm hearing is, because I did look at your bio and I almost read all those, all those, that training before to introduce you, but it's so extensive. Right. Yeah. And most um, people haven't heard of a lot of it. So it's kind of what you've done is built what I would tell an artist is you're building a toolbox. You've built this toolbox yes. with all these different methodologies. Right. Exactly. And, and then you work through them with this this quantum process. The quantum yeah. solutions is a checklist, maybe of some of the. the, yeah. Of the yeah, that's a fair thing to call my index. Yeah, I've kind of condensed it all down and and added a bunch of other things that that maybe I'm divinely guided to, or I pick up off other healers, or I pick it up off of PBS, some quantum physics program. Oh, do I need to add that to my index? Yep. So I'll add it, you know, it's just, it That's evolves a, too. So my work is all the time becoming ever more empowering and powerful. Oh, I love it. Now, do you pr pr provide one-on-one -on -one consultation then? Do people come to you for, for yes. our sessions? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, in person or by distance. I work with people around the country because it's just as effective by distance as in person. You know, everything's all connected. Everything's all one. And so I can actually be doing it while somebody is working, sleeping or playing. Doesn't matter because I can do I can go through the process. But, you know, we would set it up beforehand. What is it that you'd like to address? What's our intention here? What are we transforming? Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's, so you do, you're making art and you're also teaching classes, but you're also doing these one-on-one -on -one consultation types. Right. Things. And I also do another element. My Life Changes Unlimited is my umbrella name for all of this, the art and the healing work. And then there's one more aspect to all of that where <clears throat> even by distance, I uh, identify the life depleting energies in our homes and offices, computers, cell phones, people are more familiar with the electrical like computers and cell phones that so they are not good. But most people are not tuned into the fact that we've got negative earth energy so often coming up into our homes and offices. And some years ago, I read a study uh, that was done in a European hospital where like 80% of the people who had cancer had these negative earth energies coming up in their homes. They're very life depleting. Well, I can detect all of that, calibrate it, how bad it is, and not just block it. Like there's some people out there who try to block these. I transform it so it's positive and it's life enhancing. So it can be very life changing for people. I've had people come to me where they thought we were going to do a regular healing session. And instead, I get into my index and I'm being guided to clean up the energies in their home. One guy was a a webmaster working out of his home and we clean he was working in his den and he he came to my place and so we just kind of drew out his room and I could tune into where the energies were and calibrate them switched it all this was on a Wednesday night I called him on Friday afternoon to see how it was going he says man he says I've gotten more work done in the last two days than I got done in the last three weeks People are more productive. They've got more energy. They're clearer in the head because they don't have all this energetic interference going on. Pretty interesting. It is interesting. I think it's fascinating. I want to ask you, uh, that leads me to another question. Uh, <laughs> lots of questions. Yeah. Um, don't we create our own environment? Like, wouldn't that guy be partially responsible for the environment that he was living in? 
Uh, I, th I think that's a, a bit of a stretch. Really? Because people are not aware of these energies for the most part. Uh -huh. And they are just there. They exist. And they can change, too. Um, because some of the negative Earth energies occur when the tectonic plates of the Earth shift. Uh -huh. And with that friction, it sends out a negative green ray, which is very life depleting. So you, your house can be clear one day, but the next day, so I've had earthquakes in California affect the energies here in Dallas, not mine, but some others. I used to be in a gals group and everybody was coming to my house that night. And I took a break about four in the afternoon. I'd been house cleaning and I laid down on the sofa in my living room to watch Oprah and take a break. Wasn't any too long. I was not feeling good at all. And after that, I got calls from two other gals. I don't think I can make it to the group tonight. Not feeling good. Well, I heard on the news that night there'd been an earthquake in California. And it affected the energies here. So well, I, I mean, transformed those that... energies, make them positive, and it's all over with, you know? Well, we've it's all experienced that. We've all experienced a situation like that where suddenly it just seems like it's not meant to be. Or suddenly four people don't feel up to it or there's a shift. Right. You know, and it's often unexplained. I was just wondering if uh, if there isn't some sort of personal responsibility for the environment that people are in. I mean, I, 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 I agree that there would be times when they're not. But have you ever gone and done clearing and then come back a year later and found the person kind of back in the same place or no? Well, see, I also clear the stagnant life depleting energies that we all give off all the time. That are negative energies as we're clearing stuff. So yes, those can reaccumulate over time. Uh, the earth can shift again in the meantime. Yeah. They can go buy some new electronic equipment, new computer and printers and what sound equipment or TV, and those bring those new things in and they're all, all emanating negative things. But people don't know about the fact that how bad that is and that it can be transformed and made positive. Well, that's amazing. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it's it, and there's a lot. I went back and listened to an earlier interview I did, probably about two years ago, with Marlene Caraballo. She's a Reiki master, and and <laughs> and it's a similar process of what, but she's holding her hands over her body, and and you're clearing energy. Um, and the more I learn, you know, I'm being open and curious. The more we all, like you said, we are all connected. Everything is connected. I know for a fact that sometimes if, you know, people don't think that I'll have a crick in my neck and I realize it's because, you know, my shoes aren't right. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. right. You think yeah. they're disconnected. We want to think everything's by itself, but it's not. No, your knee bone's connected to your opposite shoulder or something. Right. right. And, and, you totally. know, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, we are whole beings, holistic beings, and we are all connected to each other as well. Right. And you within know. ourselves, my, my story, I love to tell if we have more time here is back when I started doing the, how are we doing? We're good. <laughs> when I started doing the, the healing work that I got into and started learning in the mid nineties or so, did umpty ump sessions on myself. And it was time for me to go to a, a workshop. It was gonna be up in Iowa called You and Your Vision. And at that time I was wearing trifocals and I had a problem with distance and close up and over the years that gap was narrowing to where I was just wearing glasses all the time and I didn't understand exactly what that workshop was going to be I asked people and they said oh you know is it about your eyesight or what well it can be or it's the way you view life or the way you view others or the way you view yourself well I, I went to that that night it was a Friday night Saturday and Sunday workshop Friday nights, first thing she says, okay, why are you wearing glasses? And it, it dawned on me exactly when all that happened, you know, and I could spare you all the details. But, and when I was driving to that workshop for two hours across the plains, flat plains of Iowa, I kept scooting my glasses down, but I can see better without these. Well, it turns out that, yeah, all of, all of that stuff affects our eyesight and where we're not resonating the way we want. And what I learned there was um, it can affect the muscles that hold your eyeball if they're too tense or too relaxed. That's gonna change the shape of your eyeball and therefore your focus. 
you know, and after that, I quit wearing glasses for the longest time because I didn't need them for driving, which I was, oh, I hope the cops don't stop me because I was restricted on my driver's license since I was a senior in high school, you know, and finally my driver's license came up for renewal and I went in and to retest and took the test and I got unrestricted, you know, and I was on up there in age at that point, you know. Well, so. I like the I like the your example. I like the example of how you used science to support it, which is that the tension can affect how you hold your eye, and that mm-hmm. you know it's not like some magical connection. It's uh-huh. not. It's actually logical. You know, if if right. you tense, right. get a stiff neck, if you're trying to control life, mm-hmm. your whole body posture right. changes, and it causes physical physical issues. Right. right? Yeah, and yeah. all of that is a side benefit of the other work I've been doing because I had never been doing sessions to address my own eyesight. So it was a fallout from how I was viewing the world and viewing others and viewing myself. Isn't that a hoot? It's how it's all interconnected, whether it's within or without, you know? It is. You know what I love too? I love how working on ourselves often leads to the best lessons for others. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be struggling with something and then I realize, oh, this can help a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, okay. and I don't think of it that way per se sometimes, but I can do change something on myself, do a session. And within a week or two, here comes a client with that very thing. I th- oh, oh, you know. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's a little synchronicity there. Yes. Uh, do you think that you're, do you consider yourself an empath? <laughs> not really, not in the way I see other people who are empaths, because that, that, they're such energy feelers. Uh-huh. They feel other people's energies or some modality that's going on. It really affects them. I'm not consciously aware of that. Now, I'm sure my body's picking it up at some level, but I, consciously, I'm not tuned in like that. I think, I think it's fascinating to realize how we are all totally unique in the sense that we're made up in different ways, right? You know, yeah. you and I are using a similar process to create, but I'm more paint oriented, flat dimensional, go as I go. And you're mathematical, you see, you know, and, and it's the same thing, but subtly different. And how one person could be an empath and do Reiki work and another person do something similar to energy work, but not be an empath it's amazing right because i'm bringing the energy through in my paintings i can bring the energy through my hands to do hands-on work like reiki or whatever but i don't feel it otherwise yeah i think that's i think that's lovely and i think how i think that's something i'd like to share with the listeners is to remember that you make your own rules and you know the fact that you took all these different methodologies and have created your own way of doing things from them you take what you always should learn to take what you need and disregard the rest, mm-hmm. you know. And that was given to me by the divine guidance, you know. Right. It wasn't right. me consciously trying to condense all that into a process. It just flowed and occurred. I do think, and I, I, I will share this. I love, I love being over 50, I'll say, because that's when you see all these multiple paths in your life coming together mm-hmm. and actually making a really unique combination right exactly yeah it, because at this point given all my spiritual studies as well as the healing and everything else now i'm communicating that through my art i couldn't have done that at an earlier age i didn't have that to say i didn't have probably anything to say you know? yeah, but yeah exactly. i love being able to communicate that now for those yeah. who are ready for it <laughs> yeah and look at look at you you have so, such multiple aspects of you too. I mean, you know, of who you are. I, I I don't know if you'd be hard pressed if I asked you to give one word for who what you are, what you do. I don't think you you could, could you? No, no. <laughs> no. I, I'm an artist who likes to help people who does healing work, who does transformative art, who does, you know, right. right? Right. Just trying to help create a better world, and at the same time, I love like chatting with you because I love to crack funnies and make people laugh. And I love to laugh, <laughs> you know, so. Well, yeah. as we- Joy uh, in the world. That's important, right? Yeah. That's important. So as we wind this down, is there any aspect that we haven't talked about that you'd like to share with the listeners or something that, that I skimmed over and didn't give you a full time 
golly, we've talked about so much at this point. I don't know what else there is. Um, <laughs> well, there's always I more. Do, I do have a website okay. that has my art. Uh, it's hard to, even with the best of photography, it's hard to to show uh, these three dimensional pieces and really capture what that is when you're showing it on a flat photograph. But I've got a website. People can go see some of the art. And uh, that's it. I'm well, contactable. I, I will put it, all that information in the bio. The listeners can can reach out to you. Um, okay. Whether they want to purchase a piece of art and more information on an art or something on your technique with the quantum solutions or one-on-one -on -one consulting, energy work. I think right. that's, that's fascinating. And, the, well, and listeners long distance too. Right. And one of the, speaking of the long distance, there's one other thing I think of there on the detecting the life depleting energies in our environments. I can do that by distance too. That it doesn't have to be local area here. I do that for people around the country too. It all goes back to the divine guidance. You know, that's, I, I find that so amazing. See, that's not in my my suite. But do you do you have to see the room or the house no. or do you, do you no? no. Wow. What I what I need from people is for that we make a list of all the rooms in their house, so I know oh, they have three bedrooms. Okay. And one and two of them are downstairs and one of them's upstairs. I do want to know if there some rooms are above other rooms, because if we clear the the negative life depleting energies coming up into the downstairs room, that'll automatically clear it for the one above it. Oh. Because we've stopped it and made it positive. So I like to get some of that data to know how to address the different areas. It's all. You know, I want to share something with the listeners that for my own skepticism, right? Because, um, you know, I don't have that or at least not not discover that aspect of me yet. But um, they have proven they've done studies where if someone practices basketball physically for eight weeks mm -hmm. and someone just sees it in their mind's eye for eight weeks, that they both increase in their skill level. We, we like to think we're on a physical level, right? We have to physically right. move things. Right. And well, that just goes to show that it's a conscious level. Oh, absolutely. Even before I got into any of this stuff and started getting into some consciousness, listening to audio tapes, and it wasn't Tony Robbins, but somebody else. Back, This was in the 90s. And he told a story of a fellow who had been in the war in a prison, prisoner of war he was a prisoner of war. So in the camp, he was playing golf in his mind, you know, going around a golf course. He came out to be a phenomenal golfer. That very same thing you're talking about. You know? which, which is, which explains how you can consciously clear energy in another state or another part of the world, even though you're not there. Uh, yeah, right. that's good. That's it's good. beyond. And that's as, as far as my understanding could go, but it's amazing. Right. Yeah. Right. Because your subconscious takes it all in literally. You know, that's another thing they say. We don't need to, should not be self-deprecating to ourselves or negative statements about ourselves because the subconscious takes that in as it's real. And so we're just hurting ourselves with that. And yeah, I can always. demonstrate that for people with the muscle checking. They can think a negative thought and they'll go weak or hold a positive thought and they'll be strong. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is pretty interesting. And, and uh, Ooh, I want to throw one more thing out, if you can handle it. Yes. I'll also demonstrate this to people. You know, when, when we usually hug people and we hug normally and muscle check them and they go weak. But if we hug on the other side, which is heart to heart, and they'll feel awkward to people who are not used to hugging on that side, but it's heart to heart and muscle check and they'll be strong. So the way we're all typically hugging in our culture, we're draining and, and draining and life depleting our energies. But hug on the other side and we're going to be giving energies and receiving positive energies. So I throw that out there for the world. Now I have to find, I don't know how I hug. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to have, I'm going to have to pay attention. <laughs> that's right. When we get together, yeah. I know I'm left-handed, so I tend to do things backwards all the time, but uh, but that's usually not it because it's so so prevalent in the whole culture. Everybody has on the same oh, side. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to watch for that. Yeah, right. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. And then try hugging on the other side that you're not used to. 
but if, if we're around sometime, I'll muscle check you, or maybe you can muscle check yourself and just see the difference. It's another one that people drop their, drop their mouth on, you know? That's amazing. But okay. Well, I'll, I want to, I, I want to thank, <laughs> well, there's a lot to talk about. We could have a whole episode on oh, muscle testing. We could testing. go on I, for a month, I'm sure. Yeah, I didn't go into that. But okay, so I want to thank the listeners for, for following the Spiritual Artist Podcast. As always, it's a pleasure having you listen. Uh, make sure that you follow the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And realize, of course, that this is on YouTube as well. You can see actual images of Anne's work while you watch the video. So there, if you want to go and check that out, follow the YouTube channel as well. Um, thank you for following the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Remember, you are a spiritual artist.